I think if you went out in the general public and say, who would you say looks after the physical well-being of pets if they're sick or injured? They say veterinarian. Who looks after the emotional well-being of your animals? Ooh, I don't know. We want them to think of us for both physical and emotional well-being. Fear Free is an online educational company. We offer certification for individuals. And then in April of 2018, we launched practice certification whereby an entire practice can become a Fear Free certified practice. The practices that are really successful with Fear Free, because some, some honestly will take the courses and now we're Fear Free, but they don't have the culture change. It has to literally be every pet that you look at their emotional well-being. Did the pet owners, is there anything they could have done to improve? Should this pet have been put straight into exam room or should they have checked in and gone back out and waited in their vehicle and not been in there? Were there certain treats that the pet took? Was there an individual the pet liked to see more than the other one? You really have to have a, a culture change to get it to work and then you have to involve the, the pet owners in it. Any other allied services you have if you're referring to trainers or groomers. So it's, it's, it's sophisticated but simple. It's so doable. One of the most tangible benefits is for the practice itself in that every team member will get a Fear Free membership. So for instance, for practice certification, the requirement is you have to have a minimum of 25% of your team already certified. So some practices enter into the process meeting that minimum. When they complete the process, now 100% of their team will become Fear Free certified. So it benefits them in that sense from an ease of use and a financial savings to getting the whole team certified. The other piece of that is that we now have data that shows certified practices are outperforming non-certified practices from a financial standpoint. So that's good for the bottom line and at the end of the day that's great for the pet because they're getting more care. So right thing to do, better medicine, the number of injuries dramatically falls. In fact, now if you have three certified fear-free people in a practice, you can get a 20% discount on a workers' comp by several providers. And it's also easier to attract and retain people. Talk to three certified fear-free practices just in the last few days. They each have a waiting list, a waiting list of veterinarians and technicians that want to work there. What I hear about more frequently are these myths that just won't die about practice certification. So, for example, there's this myth out there that you must have separate dog and cat entrances. That's not true. The practice certification standards were designed with the goal of any type of facility, any type of practice could meet the standards and become a certified practice. So the separate entrances, separate waiting rooms, those are all things that you can score in the optional standards, but they're not required to become a certified practice. One of them is Fear Free takes too long. And this is both in the exam room and how long to get a practice certified. Fear Free takes 29 seconds longer than a, just a regular exam. But because you're not doing the rodeo, judo throw, rugby scrum, the actual exam time is longer and better. Two is that it costs too much, so that it's just expensive to do Fear Free. It costs between 50 cents and a dollar per office visit are your hard costs, so that's really negligible. The same goes for decor, right? So some people think, well, I can't afford to repaint my practice in Fear Free approved colors. That's okay, that's not anywhere in the standards. Or, you know, I just bought my team new scrubs, now I've gotta buy them in fear. No, you don't. That's great if you do, but that's not required. So there are definitely those myths out there. I'm not sure where they came from. <laughs> and they're hard, to, they're hard to correct, but it's really important for people to know that, as I said, we try and make this as transparent as possible and anyone can have access to the standards before they even think about becoming a certified practice so that they know what they're getting into. And I think probably the biggest thing for me is I still practice, it just makes practice fun again. When, when dogs surge into the room and don't want to leave, when a cat that formerly we were terrified of, you know, we'd get the welding gloves out and a big towel and feel like you're girding up for battle, where the cat is purring, sitting on a heated fleece thing that's having sucked in all these pheromones and is eating churu paste out of the end of a tube, and you see the pet owner smiling so wide they could eat a banana sideways, it's just like, I love this profession. And so for a lot of people, it's, it's brought them back to why they wanted to be in veterinary medicine to begin with.